Hello world and welcome to the program. This is Alex and my weekly episode of Ukrainian Unleashed, a podcast where you'll get along with Ukrainians and also observe how the global scenery impacts Ukrainian society in these exciting times. We speak about events, trends, individuals and lifestyles of modern Ukrainians. So let's jump right in! In today's episode we'll discuss what's coming up next for all of us. This global pandemic will be over and here are some trends and observations of where this flow runs. 2020 has become for Ukrainians ground-shaking and fast-paced. So what would we have in the aftermath? When and how the quarantine restrictions will be lifted? And the biggest game-changers in tourism, e-commerce, medicine, education, entertainment and global populism. Welcome to the brave new world! Do more of what makes you happy. That's what I put on my wall yesterday when I cleaned my house and found this nice slogan in the back of my wardrobe. Don't even ask me why I put it there. It's written in big black capital letters on a white background and set into an orange frame. I bought it a couple of years ago in a local shop and with no reason just dropped it off instead of sticking it to a place where it belonged. I guess I was too lazy or busy for doing this that time. I think each one of us has a lot of things which were put aside and rediscovered now since the quarantine became our reality, right? But will we be able to rediscover our own life? Since we are now hearing a lot of talking about starting lifting the restrictions, I wonder if the things could be back to normal. And whether you like it or not, I think this is the right time to answer this question. As on April 24th, the Ukrainian government announced that starting from May 11th, the quarantine measures will be relaxed. The same tendencies are observed in the EU member countries, where different states are referring to the same date of May 11th for finally giving it a go. What would the world we all know, but I guess none of us could imagine yet, look like? Complete uncertainty. Well, in this episode I'll try to get acquainted with the latest trends and most obvious effects to imagine what kind of reality we'll live in, let's say in 6 months from here. Are you with me? Let's go! I've already mentioned reading a World in 2020 special issue of The Economist journal right before Covid-19 slipped outside China. Apparently, there was nothing to mention about the approaching global pandemic and recession as this issue was released in the mid-December 2019. So now when I look at it, full of forecasts given by big political figures and famous opinion leaders, it makes me wanna smile, because once again it happened to be proved that in reality we have no clue of what can happen in a very short period of time and what would be the circumstances. We can talk a lot about origin of black swans and blind spots, very unpredictable things, but now when they happened, it's better to concentrate our efforts on how to save the public trust. This is the asset we all can generate voluntarily and which allow us to make up for the losses and build a stronger society. The Ukrainian government was wise enough to implement quarantine as soon as the real threat to public health became visible. The Ukrainians kept up surprisingly well with all the restrictions regardless a dramatic slowdown of the Ukrainian economy, which already survived a local crisis in 2014-2015 when the Crimea annexation and the war in Donbass burst in. So we even didn't have a 10-year boom and bust economic cycle to accomplish, but regardless made a huge progress during the last 5 years. Although. The majority of Ukrainians won't get any government support and the vast number of industries are already completely depressed. So that's why the matter of returning to business is paramount for all even if the borders remain closed. The quarantine measures currently in place allow us to say that, fortunately, the Ukrainian healthcare system is successfully coping with the coronavirus. We now have intensive care beds occupancy level up to 10% only. So, with that being said, the quarantine will be gradually weakened by going through 5 stages carefully, with a constant checking of the current contamination level in the country, the government says. So, if all goes well, Ukraine expects to lift all the restrictions by the end of June.
I still like reading analytical materials and forecasts as this was a part of my job of business analyst previously, but then it became a part of my life. When I was doing the journalistic investigations in 2015-2016, fighting against corruption in Ukraine and aiming at helping my country to recover, I became even better in cause and effect linking. In most countries of the world, the coronavirus epidemic has not yet reached its peak, and economists, political scientists and philosophers are already trying to distinguish the contours of the new world that will arise after. Most agree that large-scale changes are going to relaunch the economy, business, international relations, domestic politics, social sphere, medicine and human behavior. But the extreme uncertainty associated with the pandemic itself and the cost of combating it gives a go to mixed forecasts. Someone believes in a new better world and someone in a long-term deterioration of people's lives and political flops. So let me show you what in my opinion will determine the life of Ukrainians in 2020 and even the year after. Let me check the local trends contributing to the global post-pandemic situation. I guess all of them have a lot in common with the picture you are observing now in your countries. Our globalized world brought us a common malady, but would it bring us a common cure? First of all, let me talk about traveling, as we are all now having itchy feet, I bet. <laughs> An expected fall of tourism industry of between 20 and 30% could translate into a decline in international tourism receipts of between 300 and 450 billion US dollars, almost one third of the outcome generated in 2019. Taking into account past market trends, this would mean that between 5 and 7 years worth of growth will be lost because of COVID-19. Herewith, around 80% of all tourism businesses are small and medium-sized enterprises, and the sector has been leading the way in providing employment and other opportunities for women, youth and rural communities, which makes this loss even more dramatic. As for Ukraine, the government has not yet calculated the losses of the industry. But according to the experts, quarantine in Ukraine will be lifted before the opening of the borders and people tired of self-isolation will immediately begin to look for the closest attractions and destinations to go anywhere but stay home. So the existing conditions will lead primarily to an increase in travel within the country. For Ukraine, a country with a 40 million population, internal tourist flows will be enough. Plus, due to fear of the large public, the demand for ecotourism will increase. Things like camping in the forest with tents, for example. While in China, a domestic travel is already beginning to recover and hotel occupancy has reached up to 30% already. In result, we can have a negative impact in the short term for Airbnb type rentals because they may struggle to communicate and comply with rigorous cleaning standards. Have you heard that in Greece, virtual tourism has been launched with a website where you can see popular attractions without leaving your home? Visitors can take a virtual tour of Corfu for free, look at archaeological museums, fly over the beaches and listen to Greek music and learn about national food. Well, it seems to me that this is good timing in Ukraine for boosting all the digital services as well. The Ukrainian e-commerce sector swiftly recovered from the 2014-2015 financial and economic crisis and has reported up to 30% of annual growth over the past three years. This is one of the highest levels in Eastern Europe. Regardless of its severity, current quarantine measures allow Ukrainian e-commerce to stay operational. To my mind, during this crisis, people will start buying more online. At PromUA, for example, one of the largest marketplaces in Ukraine, the number of orders has already increased slightly. Categories related to hygiene and entertainment products have grown up significantly. But now is a turning point, people are adapting to new lifestyle. Many have switched to remote work. Obviously, if there are a lot of stores being closed, a huge number of people will go online. At the moment, it's just not clear what will happen to the purchasing power of the population. If we talk about the future of marketplaces in a crisis, then absolutely all market players will have a serious increase in both new sellers and buyers, in my opinion. 
At the same time, the competition will not allow prices to rise and marketplaces will strive to provide the most affordable options. It seems like all online services that have developed rapidly in recent years in Ukraine should make a profit when their traditional competitors are forced to close or reduce sales due to quarantine lockdown around the world, right? This might be the best moment to show competitive advantages to a wide range of consumers. The online services, from e-commerce and express delivery to online training, telemedicine and public services, are undergoing a huge demand now. However, not everyone can handle this and many online services have actually collapsed under the shaft of orders, as I can see. Yet, it is not possible to predict what the industry will look like when offline competitors return. Perhaps the traditional business is expected to have a renaissance. For example, classical schools are definitely not going anywhere, but they are being modernized, I believe. They will not go completely online, but digital technologies will be used much more actively. This is not a substitution, but an interweaving of new methods into the traditional formation. It's becoming more convenient to do the task in your smartphone than in your notebook now, I bet. Bill Gates, in an interview with LinkedIn platform editor Daniel Roth, suggests that schools will also be indispensable primarily due to social activity. Quote, in the case of high school, I think social activity, you know, making friends, hanging out, that you get by being there physically, that's totally irreplaceable. Unquote. Online learning actually requires more physical and emotional costs, confirms his words Anna Petrova, founder of the Educational Center for Entrepreneurs Startup Ukraine. Quote, in fact, customers want to devote time to the development of the project, to go to real classes where there are no children, spouses, etc. People have adapted to working online, but it is very difficult for them to stay home all the time and concentrate on their projects in spare time. Therefore, I do not believe that the future lies in online education only. It can be a mixed one, unquote, she admits. People will eventually return to work and welcome the opportunity to socialize and meet face to face again. Having said this, many people are right now learning how effective they can be at home with video conferencing, messaging services and other collaboration based applications. Each of us will realize that not every event or meeting requires travel or a long commute. Virtual activities and remote services have now been tested at scale and should remain a great option going forward even when it is not out of necessity. People will have to adapt to new technologies, because many professions are transforming. I'm sure that now a lot of them will be automated, so that in case of illness or lockdown the companies couldn't lose a real person. Imagine if, for example, the delivery of products did not depend at all on whether there are available couriers and whether they are afraid to get infected. That's why I'm just sure that autonomy will get a forceful kick due to this crisis. I also consider that while we all stay home, our employers find out who works worse and who does not cope at all without constant supervision. Office rental is expensive and it is a pretty big contribution to an employee. Therefore, those who work effectively from home will become really valuable assets in the times to come. But the crisis will not kill creative professions as people will still want to attend to live events. Although, from my perspective, many musicians and artists have been pushed harder to explore online platforms and other marketing channels. The process of rolling back from globalization has been going on for a decade and affects all aspects of our lives. Ukraine is taking a steady course towards Euro integration and therefore is wholly dependent on international conjuncture. But now the whole modern world faced the first economic crisis caused by the global pandemic. It's my belief that, unfortunately, the fears of uncertainty and excessive impact of new technologies are pushing countries towards protectionism now. International investment has become a major industry in the global economy, but is now limited by the trade wars. Most likely companies that used to be the beneficiaries of globalization will begin to seek to localize their production and chasing governments at closing the borders. Essentially, we might admit that the fight against the epidemic should have increased confidence in scientists and medical professionals. However, as European economists found out, 
Despite complete confidence in science, the population of many countries couldn't have got what was the correct information about the virus and the epidemic and what wasn't. So in March, when COVID-19 reached Europe, almost half of the citizens overestimated the danger of the virus, both its medical and economic threats. Perhaps they were confused by an excess of scientific and pseudo-scientific information. The outbreak boomed with the publications of misqualified scientific articles. But to me, the main problems of trust perhaps are yet to come. It all depends on how quickly authorities and scientists can cope with the pandemic. That is why Ukraine has set strict quarantine measures almost at the same time when the government was changed in early March. The main task was to maintain control of the epidemic, as there were not enough economic resources to support the population and it was important not to lose the only valuable resource – collective trust. Samantha Stein, Chief Strategy Officer at QIT, which is an enterprise solution provider company, says that, quote, in these uncertain times, as our governments explore data-driven solutions to curb a global health pandemic, we must consider how our data will be handled in the aftermath of the coronavirus. This crisis will eventually pass and, as new data challenges arise, privacy technologies must become the standard for enterprises and governments alike to ensure we are best equipped to facilitate wide-scale privacy-enabled data collaboration before the next crisis unfolds." Unquote. As far as I can tell, in Ukraine over the past five years, civil society has transcended enough to oppose the authorities in the event of jeopardizing civil rights and increasing state control, but surely there will be governments and companies that won't comply with this. I think to address these global issues, we need to radically rewrite the rules of globalization. Health, welfare, labor rights and the environment must be protected by international standards which should be binding for the international movement of capitals and goods. The last but not least, this pandemic has highlighted the need for improvement in many areas of the healthcare field such as cloud services and telemedicine. So I assume healthcare will be an area that gains most of the interest. We might even observe a so-called medical race when global leaders would fight for new talents and technologies to boost medical progress in their countries. In health alone there will be pressure to increase spendings on everything from drugs to hospital care and the burden will fall mainly on governments and taxpayers. The most obvious effect of the pandemic might paradoxically be the most mundane and the most significant. Telemedicine has struggled for years to realize its full potential, hindered by a combination of bad policies and patients' attachment to old-fashioned bureaucratic procedures. Matteo Lucchese and Mario Pianta from Scuola Normale Superiore, Florence, Italy, say that quote, the coronavirus pandemic has exposed the economic and social costs caused by the lack of adequate health and welfare systems in all countries and by the absence of global rules and coordination on the protection of health from the markets of live animals in China to the ability to quickly identify and address an epidemic." Unquote. Oddly enough, now it's easier to predict what will happen in the relatively distant future than in the coming month. It is clear that the world economy will somehow recover from the crisis into which the epidemic drove it. It is my view that the pace of recovery and the size of the damage depend only on how quickly and at what cost the virus can be stopped. In any case, most likely it will not be the life that everyone is used to. <laughs> but I honestly believe that if you learn to accept relentless changes happening in our lives, there is an opportunity to not even notice them. This was a new episode of Ukrainian Unleashed podcast. Thanks for being here with me. I also would love to thank Purple Planet for lovely musical compositions used in this episode. I'd really appreciate your comments, reactions and subscription to our podcast channels in your favorite podcast app. And we did our best to extend our presence all over the web. You may find us on 
Spotify, Radio Public, Pocket Casts, Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn, Google Play Music, and also Deezer, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Overcast, Castbox, Player FM, Podknife, and of course, check our pages in social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram accounts with fresh updates are waiting for you. New episodes coming up weekly on Mondays. Stay tuned and safe.